Hey everybody, today we received a long-awaited package straight from Kamchatka. We open it. Inside we see bottles of ice and Kamchatka crab. It was difficult to get it because we got it whole. It weighs about four kilograms. Let's open her up. When folded up, it's not that big. If you straighten his little legs, you can immediately see that this is a monster that was taken from the bottom of the ocean. There are many types of crabs, but there's usually not much to eat in them. And there's a lot of meat in this one. Therefore, it is considered the most expensive in the world. Our crab costs $220. It's already boiled. We need to get the meat out of it. We tear off the shell. We tear off the gills. And begin to unscrew the legs. We do this carefully because the spikes are pretty sharp. We pull out the remaining pieces of meat from the shell and we get a whole mountain of crab legs. They need to be broken at the joints. This should be done with each of its legs. Now we take one leg, cut it lengthwise with scissors, and take out a nice, whole, real crab stick. We throw the meat into the bowl. After about 20 minutes, we got all the meat from the crab. Now, there are $220 in this bowl. In this form, we can finally eat the crab. It tastes kind of like crawfish, only twice as saturated, and the meat is juicier. Let's cook three completely different crab dishes. First up, Crab's Benedict. We'll need pieces of crab, broken into fibers, all transferred into a bowl. We take a small green onion, cut it into circles, and put it with the crab. Put a grater on top and zest a lemon into this. Cut the lemon in half and squeeze out some juice. Olive oil and chili pepper. A little salt. Now mix it up and our filling is ready. We put a saucepan with water on the stove. Let's salt the water, pour in two tablespoons of vinegar, Break the egg into a cup. When the water starts to boil, we quickly stir it in a circle with a whisk to make a whirlpool. In the middle, in one movement, pour in the egg. Cook that for 20 seconds. We take this out with a slotted spoon and put it onto a paper towel. Now we're going to need two of those poached eggs. Now let's make a hollandaise sauce. To do this, we separate the egg yolk from the egg whites. only need the yolk, or rather four yolks. We put them onto a steam bath and mix quickly. After 15 seconds, we remove it. Pour in a little vinegar and oil in a thin, thin stream and mix. Gradually, this mass thickens. It remains to add salt and pour it into a saucepan. We put the grill pan back on the stove and fry two of these buns on both sides until crisp. We put the buns on a plate, put the crab meat with dressing on top of them, level it, then our poached eggs. Now pour hollandaise sauce on top. And finally, you need to sprinkle all this with paprika. Our crab benedict is ready. We cut into the egg, and the yolk breaks as needed. Let's try it. Oh, it's fun.
fucking delicious. Crispy toast, runny yolk, hollandaise sauce, and crab. A real royal breakfast. Next up, tom yum. All right, the ingredients we need are crab, scallops, and shrimp. Coconut milk, tom yum paste, fish bouillon granules, fish sauce, oyster sauce, and cherry tomatoes. We open the bonito konzashi, pour the granules into the pan. Pour in two liters of boiling water and mix that so that the granules dissolve. This will give us a nice fish broth. Turn on the stove, bring the broth to a boil, and open the coconut milk. Although it looks more like a paste, we put all this into the pot. and to mix it up. Now our soup has turned white. So add fish sauce, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and most importantly, tom yam paste. This contains all the Thai spices we need. We throw in a couple of spoons to the soup. Mix it up. Now for the seafood. Scallops, peeled shrimp, and Kamchatka crab. Cut the cherry tomatoes in half and drop those into the soup. We'll mix this for the last time and the crab tom yum is ready. We collect it into a ladle and fill our bowl up. Finally chop the greens and sprinkle them on top. Let's taste test it. Ooh, this is one of the most intense soups I've ever eaten. Such a powerful, spicy soup with lots of seafood. For the third course, whole crab legs are needed. We cut these into pieces, which will be convenient to eat. Throw those into a bowl and top those with a couple of tablespoons of plain flour. Cover this with a flat plate and shake well. Open it up. All the pieces should be evenly covered with flour. Now let's put a frying pan on to heat. Pour in quite a lot of oil and put in our pieces to fry. Fry them on both sides to form a crispy crust. Remove the pan from the stove and drop the pieces into a deep bowl. Now let's open the oyster sauce. We'll pour that on top, cover with a plate, and shake again. That's it, done. You can serve the crab pieces on a plate. This is a super sweet and sour crab. You can sprinkle it with green onions. And now, it's definitely ready. Let's taste it. This is a very elite snack, and it clearly tastes like it. Inside, we have juicy crab, a crust of flour, and a thin layer of oyster glaze on it. In general, I'm pretty delighted with this crab cake. Of all of the sea creatures like him that I've tried, whether it's lobster or shrimp or crayfish, Kamchatka crab is definitely the most delicious. All right, guys, if you want me to cook some unusual inhabitant of the ocean, then like this video. And as soon as we get 300,000 likes, we'll do just that. And if we get 500,000 likes, then we'll have a very large ocean dweller. Everything is in your hands. Write us in the comments, what do you think I'm planning to cook? See you guys soon. Hello everyone. I think many people watching have eaten such a Nutella and go. We open up the pack and we see crispy sticks that need to be dipped in chocolate paste. Pretty cool stuff. Today we will make exactly the same, only bigger. To do this, we will need a lot of nuts. They're raw now. Therefore we open them and scatter all the nuts onto baking sheets.
then we send this all out to the oven. We will roast them at 200 degrees in convection mode. Thanks to this, the nuts will become many times more fragrant. After 20 minutes, we go and get them. Sometimes the hazelnut shell can be bitter, but I tried and everything's fine with these nuts and it's pointless to peel them. Therefore, for convenience, we simply pour them into bowls. Nutella also needs sugar, milk chocolate, cocoa, and salt. We collect 800 grams of nuts and pour them into a blender. Also add four tablespoons of milk chocolate, the same amount of sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa, and salt for balance. We cover everything up with a lid and install on the mixer. We crushed the whole mass for 40 minutes until it turned into a paste. Now we transfer it to a custom-made container. The blender wasn't good enough for a second portion of Nutella, and it broke. Therefore, we will have to change the cooking technology a little bit. We install a meat grinder into the mixer, pour nuts into the saucer, and grind them. And we meet through a really fine grid. Thus, we pass all the hazelnuts through it, and pour 800 grams of already crushed nuts into the melange. This includes sugar, chocolate, and salt. While we wait half an hour until it grinds all into a paste. We shift the Nutella into a mold and load the next portion. Later we made a double portion at once and brought the paste to such a super smooth consistency. We cooked Nutella all day until we filled out the form. Our paste is made. It remains to cook large sticks. We'll have to bake them in our big oven. But first we'll chop some wood and make a fire. Push the firewood into the oven and let it warm up. For the dough, pour three liters of 330 milliliters of water. There is also quite a lot of salt, sugar, and dry yeast. Pour one kilogram of flour. It mix with a whisk until the dough becomes homogenous. 
We wait half an hour for the yeast to work and add four kilograms of flour. Knead the dough with a spatula. Pour in 300 milliliters of oil. And knead it with your hand. Now cover it up with film. Literally half an hour in the sun and it has risen pretty good. We mince it a little bit. And again, covered up with the film. Do not forget to throw firewood so that the stove continues to heat up. The dough is ready. Tear off a part of it and put it on the scales. Each stick will weigh 850 grams. We dust the tip with the flour. Our dough is on it. We stretch it and spread it out with our hands. We turn it up and pinch it until we form such a long stick. We fold it three times. And with the help of a spatula, we transfer it to a huge baking sheet. We return the dough to its previous form. We make a fold in the parchment. And we prop it all up with a towel. Thus, we form five strips of dough. Meanwhile, the stove has warmed up pretty well. Break the coals to the sides. Inside the stove, we need to raise the humidity. Therefore, we fill up a balloon with water. Tighten the lid. And pump the air, creating pressure. And now we spray water evenly on the hot bricks from this spray gun. The dough sticks have already risen. They need to be stretched out on the baking sheet. We trim it a little bit with our hands. And push it into the oven. Close it with two lids. And after half an hour, we open it back up. The first batch of huge sticks with Nutella is ready. Let's make another one. In my opinion, the second batch turned out even more beautiful. An enlarged copy of the Nutella box was made to order for us. Shake the can of primer and cover the box with it. After that, we blow everything out with brown paint. We transfer the box to the studio, arm ourselves with acrylic paints, brushes, and rollers. Now we need white paint. We draw borders with a brush. and we make a white background with a roller. We draw the outline of the inscriptions with a pencil. And we decorate it all. Done. We insert our Nutella mold into the box. A 
as well as the huge sticks. In my opinion, it turned out really great. 